Hello, hello, and welcome to this WWF Canada Facebook Live. I love that video. I think it's so great. Um, my name is Megan Leslie, and I am the president and CEO of WWF Canada, and I'm really thrilled that you're joining us for this discussion today about the status of wildlife throughout this great country, and that you're interested in hearing about the solutions for safeguarding wildlife and their habitat. Uh, you saw some pretty stark numbers in that video, but I, I hope you also saw the teaser that we do have a unique opportunity here in Canada, and I can't wait to explore it with you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about WWF's latest Living Planet Report Canada, and we're going to share with you some of our findings in this report. And listen carefully, because there will be a test. <laughs> but actually, uh, there won't be a test, but there will be a quiz. Uh, but it's an all in good fun quiz. And no one's going to check your answers. It's just a, ch a chance to challenge yourself. There will also be a Q&A session at the end. So if you'd like to ask a question, just type it in the question, type your question into the comments section and we'll try to get to it. All right, let's get started. So earlier this month, as I said, WWF Canada launched the Living Planet Report Canada 2020. And we found that Canada's at-risk wildlife are facing troubling declines. So joining us today to talk about this is one of the authors of this report, James Snyder, WWF's Vice President of Science, Knowledge and Innovation. James, welcome to this Facebook Live. Hey, Megan, great to chat with you today. Well, I'm glad. Uh, why don't you start by introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do at WWF Canada. Sure. Um, so James Snyder, I'm the VP of our science, knowledge and innovation team, and I've been working with WF Canada now for coming up on 14 years. Um, I'm a conservation biologist by training. Um, and so I've been fortunate to working, been working with WF in terms of advancing the protection, restoration and stewardship of at-risk species and wildlife in Canada. Uh, what I'm happy to say is, yeah, our, our science, knowledge and innovation team has been working to develop the Living Planet Report now for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a key piece for us in terms of understanding the status and trends of wildlife populations in Canada. And so this isn't the first Living Planet Report. This is, I think, the third edition? Yeah, this is the third edition. Um, the first report was done back in 2007, and then we okay. did a 10-year update back in 2017. But the 2020 report really begins to dive in and, and introduce some important understanding of uh, globally at-risk wildlife populations in Canada and, and our at-risk species here nationally in terms of how they're faring. And why, why are we doing these reports? Why are they important? Well, ultimately, they provide a snapshot for us in terms of understanding the status and trends in wildlife, but mm -hmm. ultimately that works to informing how we advance the impact of all the work that we do um, and helping setting those strategies to ensure that you know, these, can, these species continue to persist into the future. Okay, so last question before we do a bit of a deep dive. What are what were the key findings of this report? Well, for me, the, the biggest finding was that of uh, species of global conservation concern. Those are globally at risk of extinction listed by the IUCN on their red list. Okay. Um, have in fact declined here in Canada, their populations by as much as 42 or 42 percent on average from 1970 to 2016. So that's a, a major one in terms of species of global conservation concern. Uh, the other is understanding that our at-risk at species now face uh, five threats on average. And okay. for me, those really wow. begin to set the stage of, you know, what does it mean for conservation now here in Canada in the 21st century? And to go back to those species of global concern, so they're globally, uh, they're global species, but we have populations here in Canada. So that, that means that we've got a chance to get this right or wrong. Lots hinging on us, it seems. Yeah, it's a big part of showing our responsibility, right, in terms of these species of concern elsewhere around the world, but how they're faring here. And I think for many people, uh, they're surprised, if not startled, to hear of uh, these uh, declines in um, in species here at home in Canada. I think more often than not, we kind of assume that, you know, biodiversity decline um, is happening elsewhere. Right. Okay, let's do a bit of a deep dive here. So um, you're showing that the populations are on the decline, especially at risk species here in Canada. If we know that these species are at risk, then why are they still declining? I mean, I would think that there would be plans for these species to try and build them back. 
Yeah, well, absolutely. We we know that they're at risk um, for the inter the species of international conservation concern. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is how they're faring here, and so that was you know really okay. uh, important piece of science, which is to establish the the trends in those populations. Um, and now we know, you know, it, they're not stable here. They're in fact declining and declining in some cases quite precipitously. Um, and then from there, also understanding what are the drivers of those declines? What's actually leading to um, the loss of wildlife, including for species at risk here in Canada? That was going to be my next question. <laughs> so what exactly is threatening species here in Canada? Well, there's a broad list of threats that we include. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main takeaway for me, of course, is that our species at risk here in Canada, those assessed by the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada, known as CACIWIC, okay. they actually face five threats on average. Um, and so it's not as if there's a single threat any longer. There's this right. multitude interacting drivers of decline. And so that's so critical for us in terms of all the work that we do ensuring that now we have responses that can effectively address those multiple threats. When I read the report and I saw all those, those threats that they, they stack onto each other, they interact with each other, and uh, you noted that um, amphibians and ref reptiles in particular face a lot of threats. Um, are there any, any in particular um, that you'd like to highlight for us? Yeah, so amphibians and reptiles come out as the, the most threatened taxonomic group or group of species within our study of, of vertebrates in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and they face on average seven threats, um, so even more so than, than the others. Uh, an illustration of that is the wood turtle. So the wet, wood turtle is uh, a semi-aquatic um, species, lives on the combination of in-stream and on the edge of you know, our, our streams. Um, but where they face is many of nine of the 11 threats that we include in our analysis. Wow. Um, they're impacted by a whole host of different ac human activities. Because in the end, it's our human activities that are leading to the decline of these species in some way, shape or form. But imagine that nine threats for these species um, mm -hmm. here um, in, you know, in, in parts of southern Ontario, southern Quebec, and um, many of these important landscapes here in the southern part of the country. Okay, I want to talk about uh, what we can do to combat those threats in a bit. But first, um, wood turtle is a good example of a, a species here in Canada. What about these global species that you're talking about? So species, I think this means that they could exist in other countries, or maybe uh, also that the global community has said, hey, listen up, pay attention to this species that's in Canada. What are some of those global species and how are they faring? Well, one of the species I'd like to talk about is the Vancouver Island marmot, mm -hmm. right? And so this is an example of an endemic species, okay, meaning that, what does that mean? Yeah. it means that it's only found in Canada. Okay. Um, and the population here is of uh, it's critically endangered, uh, which is essentially the highest uh, rank or the most imperiled designation that they can receive. Um, and so we have this global responsibility because it's only found in Canada to be ensuring that this population uh, continues to the, into the future. It lives on uh, Vancouver Island, and it's you know as as you can see here in the video um, is a pretty remarkable uh, species, but heavily threatened by a number of human activities. Uh, right now, I think there are about two hundred individuals of the Vancouver Island Island marmot wow, remaining in Canada, but in the world, like that's this is the only population of them. I love these little guys. I know you're not supposed to be like, oh, these animals are so cute, <laughs> but I love the Vancouver Island marmot. I think it's one of the cutest species that we have going. Um, when uh, when I think about other animals that I just even love to look at, I know that puffins uh, have a particular story and they're also of global concern. Well, the Atlantic puffin is actually on the cover of the Living Planet Report in, in 2020. And in, in many ways, it's an example of a species of global conservation concern that's doing well. Okay. Um, and so that's a really important story to tell, which is that it is possible for us to be um, ensuring that these uh, species continue into the future. In this case, the Atlantic uh, puffin uh, has been brought back from low numbers through the changes in our fisheries uh, activities. Mm. Uh, we no longer use what are called these gill nets in the Atlantic salmon fishery, and that has led to a reduction in, in the take or bycatch of, of puffin. And so we have a growing population of, of puffin here in Canada, uh, which shows that we, we can take an important uh, role in stewarding these species of global conservation concern.
A success story. Thank you. Um, you and I were chatting one day about uh, the other side of the coin, quite literally, on this on this issue. Uh, maybe if you want to share with folks what, what we meant by the other side of the coin. Yeah, well, the, as you say, the Atlantic puffin and caribou, I think, show two sides of the coin of species of global conservation interest. And in Canada, we have a number of populations and herds of, of caribou. But the, the reason is that they're on, actually on the back of the coin. The mm -hmm. caribou is on, on the flip side of the quarter. Um, and so it's an iconic species. Um, many of us, of course, r recognize the caribou found really from coast to coast to coast. Um, and different types of caribou, whether it being boreal or woodland caribou, uh, mountain caribou, um, and of course our migratory tundra caribou. Uh, just this past week, we've heard of populations of mountain caribou in Jasper National Park have been declared extirpated, and that's within a national park, meaning they've gone locally extinct. Okay. Further, migratory tundra caribou, which you're seeing in front of you now, or barren ground caribou, some of those populations have declined by more than 95% in recent wow. decades. 95%. 95, 98% some of those herds. And so uh, herds that are numbered in the tens of thousands yeah. now reduced to hundreds. Okay, so um, I said at the beginning that there are some pretty stark numbers here, but I also said that uh, we're gonna talk about solutions. So James, is there is there a solution? Absolutely, there are solutions. Um, and for me, the report kind of brings forward the, the important urgency of, of the need for action. And this sort of coming decade as being this pivotal moment um, in terms of advancing the protection and restoration of, of biodiversity in Canada. Um, and we know ultimately that biodiversity and climate change go hand in hand. Um, and so the two central solutions that we bring forward uh, within the Living Planet report relate to what I'll call nature-based climate solutions, which is mm. how we can protect and restore habitat for wildlife and for climate change. And also the, the critical role of indigenous leadership as the mechanism or pathway to do so in a just and equitable way. So using nature to fight climate change. Amazing. You got it. Amazing. Putting nature to work, some would say. Yeah, putting, that's a, yeah, I like that, putting nature to work. Um, Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on the time, and I know we have some trivia. So, uh, James, I think we're gonna we're gonna segue to trivia. And folks, if you think you know the answer, just type it in the comments there. And I'm gonna coerce James into giving us some hints because I think some of these might be actually a little tricky. Uh, so let's get started with trivia. So type in the comments with your responses, and we'll start with our first question. What's the average decline of species of global conservation concern? So the average decline of species of global conservation concern. James, I think you said this number at the beginning. Want to give us uh, some hints without giving the answer? <laughs> James, I think might be muted. That's the way it goes in live Facebook <laughs> interaction. Yes, species of global conservation concern in Canada. This is one of the key findings of the Living Planet Report 2020. Okay, and it was a big number. I remember that. It was a big number. Startling, I think, for many of us to see a decline of this size in okay. this species. Okay, let's see. Answer, 42%. That was a bit of a tough one, throwing out numbers. Jacqueline had a guess of 50. She was close. Um, so, yeah. Okay, next question coming up. Um, now that we're all unmuted and ready, 57. Kathy guessed 57%. Very close. You guys were listening. Which of these species is endemic to Canada? Endemic. Okay, James, right. first remind us what endemic means. You gave us. So these are species that are only found in Canada. And so we have okay. a, a global responsibility, some would say, in terms of ensuring that they continue into the future. Okay. And so endemic only here. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say probably not polar bear, because I I know that polar bear are circumpolar. Is that what you That's say? That's right. Circumpolar found through many parts of the Arctic across the Arctic system, Canada, Russia, and other places. I see also what looks like a collared pika, maybe. And okay. I think those are the caribou that we discussed oh earlier as well. There. Everyone's saying B. Catherine and Sama and Heather and Kathy. Well done. Oh my gosh, everybody's Vanda. 
everybody's logging in with B. Everybody knew it was the Vancouver Island Marmot. <laughs> well done. Um, you said there were 200 of these guys left? Yeah, I think the current population as of 2019 was about 200 individuals. Wow. Okay, next question. What's on the cover of the Living Planet Report Canada? Who is our cover model? Um, and this for, uh, this was a good news story, I think, in many ways. Right. In terms of a, 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 a species here in Canada of global conservation concern, but that has been doing well in response to you know our, our, our efforts essentially to bring it back. That is a great hint. Um, some people have nicknames for these little guys. Um, I know on the East Coast, some people call them flying potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> They're not exactly aerodynamic. Um, let's see. Uh, Heather has guessed Puffin. Kathy has guessed Puffin. Uh, Naomi, Puffin. Jeez, oh, everybody. Yeah, Puffin. Good job, Savannah. Atlantic, Atlantic Puffin. So even, even getting in what kind of Puffin. Um, so glad to hear a good news story about these little guys. All right, next question in three, two, one. What can help fight climate change and reverse biodiversity loss? Oh, this was like the last thing that James said. So if you can uh, remember right before we went to trivia, um, oh, what are some other clues, James? Let's see, ultimately, you know, habitat for wildlife, but also can help us fight climate change and with a huge benefit also to us, the human species by investing in this, what is it? Okay, um, Burns says beavers with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, beavers could have a role in this. Um, Gabrielle is saying uh, nature, putting it to work. Um, Kathy's saying nature put to work people people right. remembered what you said oh and Gabrielle Good. pointed out um, indigenous leg conservation as well which I think is also something you talked about in this um, and absolutely absolutely right excellent so I, was that all of our questions I think so okay great so I'm looking at um, the Q&A and we do have uh, a couple of questions here. Let me just scroll. Um, so James, uh, someone asked the question, why isn't habitat loss its own threat category? Because, so you you were talking about all these threats to wildlife um, and it, it didn't say habitat particularly, like as, as spelled out as habitat. So why isn't it its own threat? Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, habitat loss and conversion was connected to each one of the 11 threats um, mm, and okay. sort of inextricably linked to, to each of them. We know that habitat loss is the principal driver of, of biodiversity loss in Canada and around the world um, and, and so deeply connected to all of the 11 threats in, in, the, in the report. So it's almost like the 11 so, are <laughs> habitat yeah, it's, it's loss in some way aspects of habitat loss and, and land use change yeah okay um so we have another question here about uh some examples of canadian species that are doing well and uh certainly you talked about the puffin i'm i'm, I'm hopeful that there are other examples out there sure there's a number of stories i think of of conservation success and that was a big part of the report as well and to show that conservation you know, can have a real impact. Um, and whether it's, you know, trumpeter swans, mm. um, you know, th there's great examples of when we take uh, dedicated effort that across society to make uh, these changes that it is in fact possible, uh, in some cases to bring them back right from the brink of extinction. Um, and so for me, uh, I think the trumpeter swan is a great example of that. Yeah, uh, tell us a bit about that. What, what exactly were the measures that people took? Well, you know, there's a broad suite of activities, you know, that were, were taken really to, to bring this back from the brink of extinction. Mm -hmm. um, and so more often than not, we've seen examples of captive breeding and habitat uh, protection. Uh, but for me, th this really is a great example of systemic change in terms of how we're able to bring back uh, a species from the brink of extinction. Excellent. Um, so that's a good example, along with some of the actions that were taken at the bigger, broader level. Um, I, I've lost who it was, but someone put in the in the questions, um, what can I do to help? 
I think well, this I think, is the million dollar question. <laughs> I personally think that, you know, we each have a really critical role in reversing these trends and, and stopping and reversing wildlife loss in Canada. And, you know, I, 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 there's this important aspect of the of restoration and broad scale habitat restoration. Many of the species at risk that we see in Canada happen in the southern part of the country, which are in more human dominated landscapes. And it, it's in those places that we as individuals, as community members, as families, uh, that we can be engaged to actually be building back those habitats. In some cases, it's as small as, you know, your condo balcony or your backyard garden to be building back habitat that matters uh, for, for biodiversity. Uh, and so we can be doing that right across the country from coast to coast to coast to bring back these important ecosystems. Yeah, the church down the street from me actually has a pollinator garden. And I guess I didn't always think, you know, you, you think, oh, it's a garden, but that's that's habitat. That That's, you know, stitching together these small parcels of habitat, including in our human and dominated landscapes, I, I think absolutely uh, provides a great pathway for us in terms of building nature back. Awesome. Well, I think you're right. There is a role for all of us to play and it could be as uh, as small as your balcony or it could be getting involved uh, with your neighborhood community center or with your munis municipality. There are all kinds of ways to do uh, restoration and, and tackle these issues. James, I really want to thank you for joining us and sharing with us a little bit about the Living Planet Report Canada for 2020. This is all the time we have left for this Facebook Live. And uh, thanks also, James, for sharing with us what we can do to reverse that decline. And I also want to thank all of you for tuning in for having fun with our pop quiz. Oh my gosh, a um, lot of correct answers there. Well done. Uh, and thanks for asking such great questions. Uh, we really enjoyed this. Please do tune in next week. We're back next week to learn more about species at risk.